Molen Koff will be the one to send this one away. And uh, number 24, Brad Bushninski, will receive. He's deep for South Central. Molen Koff to send this one away. Good kick. Bobbled by South Central. And here they come on the return, taking it towards the middle. And the Comets are going to be there to wrap that one up. Great stop by the Comets. Leads them to good defensive position. Uh, putting South Central right at their own red zone. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to get a first look at this Comets defense. And we saw last week they were a little bit shaky, of course, going up against bigger you know, players. That's, that's going to happen. You're not going to have the size advantage, but this Comets team, hopefully they can prove something here in I and really get a clamp down on the defense that hasn't been uh, the strongest they've seen in past seasons. Yeah, I have to say that uh, the defense did fumbled oh, fumbled a start, and he retains it. Defense did a, a good job of slowing down uh, that Pioneer team in the first and second quarters last week. Um, and and it, it's a, one of those situations that the scoreboard didn't tell the whole story at the end of last week's play. So, And uh, defense off to a solid start here. Yeah, absolutely. That's just one of the struggles you're going to see in in small school 1A football is you're going to have some guys that are going to be good on both sides of the ball, but eventually some guys who play both ways will start to wear down, and unfortunately that happens to the Comets. Um, they got a lot of two-way players, a lot of guys that – are good enough on both sides of the ball to play both sides, but we've seen that sometimes it can just take a, a mental and physical wear on you. Uh, but the Comets, they're starting off strong here. Got a third and medium, and hopefully they can send uh, this South Central team three and out. Drop back to pass. Firing on the slant. That one's caught. That is Brad Bushninski. Defense stops it on contact, but still enough to move the chains. Yeah, Comets really haven't had to defend a lot of passes this year. Most of the teams they've played have um, been mostly running teams, te uh, guys that really like to use the offensive line to pound it down down the field. But this South Central team, they're not afraid to drop back there and let the ball fly through the air. And that's one thing I did hear uh, Coach Coach Kinzer, I believe it was, or it could have been Coach Scales, was talking about that was a concern that, that there is, is that they're not going to be able to, protect that ball in the air. Great stop there. Yep, good tackle there by the Comets. And uh, that is uh, Brody Brewer there. He switched numbers to number 46 last game, I do believe. So he's coming out here, new number, and uh, has a good start there um, with that tackle. Comets in a man look here. Another run, and that one's not going to go anywhere. So this Comets defensive line, he did have a, um, a little bit of a struggle last week um, during Pioneer. They're really starting to, um, you know, get their keys down, and they're really firing off the, the snap early and quick, and they're, they're getting tackles, and it's nice to see. So about a third and seven here, third and six. And um, we'll see what South Central's done. They've passed and they've ran, so you pretty much got the whole playbook open here. Drop back to pass. All the time Scrambling. in the world. Here comes the Comets. Let, they're going to throw it deep, and it's incomplete. That is great pass deflections there by Gage Muneer, the sophomore, able to get up and tip that one to the ground. That's one thing that you want as a corner is when the ball's in the air, you're not worried about where your guy is. The only thing you're going to worry about is getting that ball, and Muneer able to deflect it, tip it down. The Comets look like they're going to get their first possession of the football here early in the first quarter. Yeah, Maneer there defending two potential receivers. Really great work to get that football on the ground. Yep, and that's one of the things that you might see from younger players is they tend to play the man more than the ball, but Maneer was solely focused on that football. And a blocked punt here to start, and the Comets dive on it. What a great job there by number 27. 
I'm um, not able to see who that was, but um, nonetheless, a great job and a heads up play. Excuse me, that was Tucker Wolver with uh, the deflection, and the Comets able to dive on it. So, Comets off to a really hot start here in this one, and they got the ball, um, I believe, on the 31 yard line. Great field position. Yep, you haven't really seen the Comets ed ru edge Russ on, on punts this year. They've really tended to just drop back and play it. But the Comets aggressive start, and it pays off there. Directly to Ashton Boyer, cut up the middle of the field. Not a lot found there, but enough to get around two to three yards. That's one thing we've seen. The Comets are switching their personnel uh, more often now than I've seen in the past two to three years. They're not afraid to use... All 11 guys on that field. We've seen even London Hurd run it. We saw him run it last week. We've seen uh, Molenkoff. We've seen Yarber. We've seen Ashton Boyer uh, make some appearances in the running game. And the Comets, they're not afraid to use anybody out there on the field. Molenkoff hands back to Boyer on the outside. That's going to be a lost, uh, loss of one there. Boyer had a one-on-one -on, -one on, the, on the left side, just not able to juke around him. Unfortunately brought down, so the Comets are going to have their first um, true challenge here of the night. Have a third and nine, third and eight, and we'll see what they can dial up here. Of course, we've also seen the Comets both run it and put it in the air. So a lot wider or a lot deeper playbook than they've had in years past. I believe a timeout has been called. Yep, Pioneer. Excuse me, I'm um, and We'll take a timeout. Well, they're going to talk strategy. We're going to thank our sponsors. Come back here in a minute. You're watching Cast Comets Football here on RTC. Team, welcome back. Game is just under five minutes elapsed. Still scoreless here in the first. After that strategy session, let's see what the Comets have dialed up here for a third and long. Yep, yeah, and the Comets obviously had that um, blocked blocked punt here and this is one of those fourth down territories that you can get four to five yards and still be able to go for it on fourth down so it will be interesting to see what the Comets dial up here Boyer receives and it's going to be a handoff to Yarber he's, he's got a wide open field that's going to be a touchdown he's going to strut into the end zone the Comets they're on the board first six zip great blocking there um, by the Comets the offensive line and Yarber could have drove a truck through that that, that was right there. That was great work by the O-line. Great read by Yarber. Yep, absolutely. And that's just one of the things that we've seen in this revamped playbook is more misdirections, not afraid to, to pitch it through the air. And we're going to see um, Drew McGrew with his first PAT of the night. Good hold there, and that one's going to be good. So Comet's great start here on the block punt and turns it into seven points going the other way. Great way to open it up. And uh, speaking of that block punt, I think I have that dialed up here. Let me take a look at that as uh, we see the play. They got the Comets. That stop right there where they uh, took possession on the satellites, roughly 30 yard line. Yep, absolutely, and that's just one of the things that is so important um, in football is winning the turnover battle. So Comet's able to steal steal some field position right there and turns it into seven points the other way. Brad Bushniski to receive this kickoff from Gavin Molenkoff. I think if Molenkoff's smart, he puts it just slightly short again. He absolutely seemed to work out there for the first time. It had a little bit of a bobble. And uh, in all reality, Molenkoff, um, he can do it all here on the, on the kickoff. It's going same exact spot. That one's going to roll into the back of the end zone. Actually, it's going to be on the one-yard line, so Comets get a huge break there, and how about that play? Such an unlucky roll for the satellites there. Uh, you can tell that was uh, Rylan Rondo. He was uh, expecting that to roll in and uh, get him up on the 20, 
Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, really good play here by the Comets can give them some free points on the board. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he tried. To, you always want to try to receive it just to um, re, just try to stop the ball from going backwards, but it just slightly rolled right over his head, put on the one-yard line, I think. And um, Comets did the rest there, so great kick by Molenkoff, and it's going to be a QB keeper here to start. Comets defensive line really getting it done here tonight. Great start and another great tackle here on this second drive here for the Satellites. Smart play by the Satellites, keeping in the hands of the QB and just putting some yards between themselves and that uh, safety. Yeah, absolutely. The last thing you want, especially in backed up this far on your own side of the field, is a sack. If you get a sack, you're pretty much just looking to punt the ball, basically. But um, the Satellites team, good decision now to keep it with the quarterback, and we'll see what they do here. They're going to drop back to throw. On the out route, just drops through the hands of Bushninski, the senior. He's had a lot of touches here tonight, but not able to pull that one down. Of course, he had that um, the catch on the third down to keep the drive going last time um, for it stalled out. So Bushninski, he's getting his number called a lot. like to see him pull that one in, though. Great pass pressure by the Comets defense that uh, took, took time away in the pocket, forced a rush pass. I think that's the only reason that one didn't complete. Third and medium here. It's going to be a rollout. Foul towards the middle of the field, and it's caught. It's going to be a foot race to the end zone, and it looks like the Comets are going to be able to bring him down at the 50-yard line. That was Logan Molenkoff, the cornerback, able to bring him down. That was number 80, Cameron Schultz, the senior. That's just one of the routes that is just so versatile in the game of, of football. It's a slant route. If you get him over the middle of the field, and if he keeps going, you can hit him up on the other side of the field on an out route and just terrific ball placement there right in the in the bread basket as they say and um, the satellites able to keep their drive going be another pass towards the outside and not able to dial that one up played in Strach there unable to find his man had the good passing protection just that's just one of the things that is going to happen, especially it's super humid tonight. There's going to be some slurry hands out there, and I'm not able to put that one on the money. Satellites with the best field position of the night as they half the first quarter is now gone. Run up towards the middle of the field. There's number 65 there for the Comets. Parker Zimmelman, the freshman. Gain of about four on that. And he's going to come out of the game, get a quick breather. And um, London Hurd, the younger brother of Noah Hurd, is going to come in and uh, put the defensive end position here. Kind of switching up their defensive coverage. Communicate on both sides, just to stay on that side of the field. And uh, we'll see what they dial up here. It's going to be a pass towards uh, the kick out there, and Manier trying to make a wide open tackle, unable to do it, but um, maybe the comments Jabez Yarbrough would have helped him clean up that one, although a first down will be had by the satellites. We might be looking at a game of trade and punches here tonight, Gage. Yeah, absolutely. It's looking like a shootout. All righty, we've seen a lot of explosive plays on both sides to start. Two teams not afraid to put it in the air, and um, this is going to be a fun game to watch. I'm really intrigued to see how this one's going to turn out here tonight. Up the middle. Quarterback keeper on the RPO. Brought down by a host of Comets. So, uh, Jabez Jarber and uh, Owen Chapman. Looks like about a gain of three. Comments look like they're going to be in a more of a zone look here for this next play. Got four in the box. It's going to be a hand and uh, about a gain of one. And that's one of the things that you're going to learn 
um, from watching the satellites is they like to throw it over the middle of the field and they like to throw check down. So what's this going to, the comments going to see is they're going to play a lot more zone in this game, not a lot of man. So you're going to try to put two, three, maybe even four guys in that box and uh, really try to make it difficult from the pass over the middle of the field. And you can see it right now. Comments have three in the box there in the middle of the field. And um, we'll see how this third and third and medium plays out here. Drop back to pass. Pressure by the Comets and almost a pick. It was um, Ashton Peters and Molenkoff right there to uh, make that stop. Fourth and medium. And this is, once again, like I said before, one of those areas when um, you can go for it. Of course, in the NFL, this might be a field goal, but we're not quite there yet. And yeah. um, fourth and medium, I think that offense might as well just stay out there and see what they can cook up. That'd be my thought. I, unless you get tackled deep behind the line, there's no reason not to go for it, and they've moved the chains a lot this drive. Plenty of time in the pocket. Sends it up Aaron over the middle. Out. And it's all almost a pick. I believe that was Gage Veneer who once again able to make that stop. News he probably should have had it, but at the same time, um, Comet's going to get excellent field position for the second time to start. So Comet's able to stall out that drive, and they'll take over. Comets have to cover about 40 more yards than they did last time. But if they can come out with the same energy they did, I don't see that being a problem. Yep, and someone say there's a different energy here in the Comet Creator. They're showing a lot more more confidence in what they're able to do here, and it's it's proved dividend to start this game. We'll see if they can keep it rolling. Back to Boyer, and it's a handoff towards Yarber on the outside. Tries to brick a tackle, keeps his footing, but he's ultimately going to be brought down for about a loss of one. Props to the defense on that read. <laughs> Molenkoff running out the pass. He's going to keep it, keeping it up the field. And that's going to be a first down Comets, I do believe. And they're going to move those chains. So great job there by Molenkoff. We've seen that out route before on the boot. And Molenkoff, that's just the court vision they're going to find as a, an older guy, just knowing that he can probably get more yards just by keeping it. Tucks it under his shoulder and able to run that right down for the moving of the chains there. Logan Molenkoff out wide here. Thomas in the shotgun formation. It's going to be snapped to Boyer here. He's going to get about five yards there. Good solid run here. Good solid runs to start here for the Comets. You don't need ten every time. Just want to get around three or four. Just keep those chains moving. And they've done that pretty well here. And I have second and medium. And uh, we'll see what the Comets will do here. Back to Boyer, who's going to follow Molenkoff, and he's going to break out towards the left side. Coming up towards the sideline, going to be out around the 27. More than enough to move those chains and get us another cast and comments first down. Yep, and the patience on that run by, by Brewer just follows guys and eventually gets bumped out towards the outside of the field. And there was nothing but mowed grass in front of him, and the comments able to move those chains. Comets back in the halfback position. Molenkoff shedding some tackles on the QB keeper. He yeah, gained around six yards. So Comets establishing their running game early, and it's been nothing but domination here in terms of the running. Comets already have a lot of positive yardage, and they're hopefully trying to keep that going here on this drive. And I think... Uh... Once it looks like South Central has the number on these runs, they'll probably just drop back and start putting it in the air, Gage. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's just one of the things. That, that's what all football teams want to try to do when starting to um, when starting a game is you want to try to establish the run game first and foremost because once you start doing that, then the defense really has to start thinking about what plays they're going to call. Um, it really does allow for the offense to drop back and throw the ball. And, of course, if you run the ball well, might as well keep doing it. So you kind of have a double-edged sword here once you start getting the run game going. And it's really nice to see the Comets finally being able to put that together here tonight. Absolutely. Comets get a holding call, though. Unfortunately, they're going to march back to the original line of scrimmage. Excuse me, they'll go five yards behind. Yeah, and that's just kind of the kryptonite of we've seen all great offenses. That's kind of the one thing that always holds them back at every level is just those holding calls. You can always have a great drive, but really, doesn't, really only takes one of those those huge uh, backbreaker plays like a holding on a big play to um, stunt the play. But we'll see if Comets can um, really respond here. Molenkoff rolling out the pass. He's going to fire one towards his brother in the end zone. It's caught, and Molenkoff locks it in for six. Fantastic there. That uh, that pass looked like it might go uncaught, and Molenkoff able to pull it in and then find nothing but grass between him and the end zone. Yep, the concentration by the freshman is really nice to see. Only worried about that ball, not worried about the corner on him. Just focuses on that on that pigskin, able to pull it in, and could basically prance into the end zone after that catch. We're going to have McGrew with his second PAT attempt of the night. Good hold there by Molenkoff, and that one is straight through. So Comets lead 14 zip. Well, as the Comets line up for their third kickoff of the night, we're going to step away and thank Rochester Iron or Metal for helping br us bring this broadcast to you live from the Comet Crater on RTC TV. Welcome back, forward. ladies and gentlemen. Just under a minute left here in the first. Comets now 2 TD advantage on the board. Bolenkoff going to send this one away, and um, Bushninski once again back to receive. So if we'll I was, see how this one. If I was Molenkoff, I'd send it right back to Rondo. It's worked twice. Yeah, absolutely, and that's exactly where it's going. He's going to return this one. Rondo's like, no, no, I got it this time. That was some pretty good lateral movement there and cuts right up the field for about 10 extra yards. So good patience there by the satellites. They're going to get some pretty decent field position. Thirty, twenty-nine, thirty-one. Thomas and I believe a man look here for this drive, and we'll see how that pans out. Shotgun formation here for the satellites. It's me a run in. What a tackle there! By the comments, it was Parker Zimmelman trying to get the strip sack, just not able to get it. But um, the other comments right behind him to wrap him up, bring him down. Cade Zerazi with that carry managed to break that first tackle and uh, got two or three yards with that. Play clock just, or uh, excuse me, game clock just under the play clock. I think if I was the satellites, I'd let this one buzzer out. Uh, looks like they're just trying to communicate to the coach on what they're going to do, and I think they're just going to let this one stall out. And I believe that is what is going to be the outcome of the first quarter. Comets 14, Satellites 0. Well, Gage, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look at those. Uh, see if I can't get this dialed up. And uh, we've got that first break there by Yarber where he finds that opening. And uh, maybe if I cut this across instead of just watching it on the second screen, that'd help everybody at home better. <laughs> so Yarber finds that opening and just nothing but grass in front of him as he visits the end zone there. 
That's and just one of the things that we've seen Yarber improve on. And you might have seen last year, you might have just tried to beat it towards the outside, but patient enough to be able to find the cup field and, of course, it led him all the way to the end zone. And then that second touchdown here, Mollenkoff keeps it, finds himself with an open pocket, sends it over, slightly contested. His brother brings it down and just straight into the end zone. Just fantastic pair of touchdowns there for the Comets. And uh, looking forward to seeing this defense continue with the stops and let the hits keep rolling. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen the Comets actually use that passing play probably around uh, five to six different times during the course of this season. And I believe they've dialed up Molenkoff on three of them. So able to keep that success rolling here. And Molenkoff, of course, just puts it right in the chest of his younger brother and able to walk that one into the end zone. So Comets definitely have the momentum going in here in the second quarter. And it'll be interesting to see how the satellite team will respond. Second and I believe seven yards to go. Satellites with just over 65 yards of grass to that end zone. See yeah. how the comments go. Oh, plenty of time in the pocket. Shotgun formation. They're firing towards Bushnitsky, and that is overthrown. That would have been an incredible catch for Bushnitsky with double coverage on him. Yeah, absolutely. That's just one of the things that you can do when you're playing man is if you have one man streaking up the field, you can send two because you have two safeties back there, and that was just a two-on-one. And uh, usually the ratio is always going to win in that scenario. And uh, the Comets able to um, allow that one to fall and complete. Third and seven now. Got a flag was a on pretty the defensive obvious side. So That was a pretty obvious false start there. Just got off the line just a little bit quick. It's one of the, one of the key struggles there as an offensive lineman. I've, in sixth grade, when I, the one year I played, that was one of the things that was kind of hard for us to just – being able to time up the snap perfectly. And um, sometimes it's hard to hear. Sometimes it's just um, hard to know what count you're going on. And uh, unfortunate break there for the satellites. Third and long now for the satellites. Of course, we've seen them cover 12 yards in a single play more than once here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. No need to be discouraged here. They're going to drop back to throw. Good pressure there. And almost a pick by Peters, almost at his second of the season. Good coverage there by um, Ashton Peters, able to find that gap. And, Fourth in um, a parking lot, looks like they're going to bring in the kick team. Yep, might as well, especially being backed up this far on your own side of the field. Um, really no reason to try it. Jabez Yarrer already had a touchdown to his aim tonight. Is back deep to receive for the Comets. And Gage Manier over here looking to get in, swat down a kick. Almost like they're going to go edge rush here with Molenkoff. And almost got to. That was Tucker Wolver again. And Yarber going to return this one. Spins out of it. Cuts back upfield, trying to follow his guys, but to no avail. Good starting field position they'll have here around the 31. I've seen how fast Jarber is. I guarantee you I would not want to be a blocker for him because there's no way that I could stay ahead of that individual. Yeah, when he gets football, he likes to really get it and go, turn on the burners, and uh, spun out of the first one, just not able to um, really accelerate through the second hit. Uh, but Comets um, really can't complain with this field position. I believe that's a 32-yard line. First and 10. Comets once again in the shotgun formation. We've seen this all night. Right back to Boyer, following up the left side of the field. And Boyer off to the races in a first down. There's a flag on the field. Interesting to see what this will be. Hopefully not another hold. And that's just one of the things that's so hard as an offensive lineman when you get your guy just exploding out of the C-gap um, is you're trying to not get a hold. And I believe that's gonna, what it's going to be. And they'll mark these ones off. That's just one of the things, because you want to get out and you want to block for your teammate. You really want to try to create advantage, but at the same time, you got to do it without holding. And um, fortunate that just bites the comments there. First, first down, though, going to replay that one. So they'll still have 
three, maybe even four plays to um, to get this first down. Looks like about a first and 13. That's uh, Boyer off to the races. Boyer finding space. He's going to stiff arm and get out of bounds around the 49-yard line and a flag. So that's going to be a late hit, I believe. And um, good eyes there by the ref to be able to see that one. That's just one of the things that if you see an offensive player trying to get out of bounds, you have to let him. You cannot lay a hit. Although as difficult as that might be to judge, you really got to um, really know where you are on the field. And that's just one of the things that is so hard in football and it's going to bite the satellites here and the Comets are going to add more yards onto that terrific run. Personal foul, 15-yard penalty, if I'm remembering correctly. So that's going to spot the football on the satellites, 32. Comets once again in the shotgun. It's going to be another pitch back to Yarber. He's going to be patient, finds around six yards. Patient six yards right there. We saw Yarber um, didn't really have anything anything going, so let the offensive line keep doing their thing, eventually able to create just a big enough gap to get halfway through the chain. So great job there by Yarber, and um, good blocking there by the offensive line. Second and medium, and I wouldn't be surprised the comments go ahead and try to take another shot here at this end zone. Back to Boyer on the keeper. Boyer fires blockers up the field. And he's going to be brought down at the 20-yard line. Comets, another visit to the red zone, and another move of the chains. Yep, Comets offensive line just putting on a showcase here. It's going to be a, a good film session, at least for this first half of play, um, for what they've been able to do here on the offensive side of the ball. And realistically, the only only couple of critiques I could see on the defensive side is that uh, the holding call and um, those couple of missed picks. But aside from that, they're looking good on both sides of the football tonight. Firing towards Edison. He's going to bring it in, and he's going to march it in for six. And the Comets are rallying here in the first half. We'll take every visit to the end zone. Yep, Lucius Edison, the junior there. Um, brings it in for six. Really had to go low to try to grab that football in. Um, got it, put it in both hands, and then just walks it right in. That's once again the play that Molkoff scored off of, and it's just really working here tonight. McGrew kicking the opposite direction now. Yep, already had two PAT, PAT attempts already. That one's right through. So McGrew, three for three here tonight, and the comments are rolling. 21 to nothing comments with just over two minutes gone in the second. We're going to step away, thank our sponsors. You guys make sure to stay tuned for more exciting cast and comments football coming to you live from the Comet Crater on RTC. TV. Welcome back to the Comet Crater. The comments are lining up to kick off again after their third visit to the end zone. Really just putting on a clinic for the visiting South Central Satellites. Yeah, they're giving them a lot to think about on the offensive side. And um, the satellites here, this is kind of where you have to make a stand. Um, it's not out of reach yet, but you really got to find at least something to build on here on this drive. This is incredibly important here for the satellites. Molenkoff for his, I believe, fourth kickoff of the night. Good kick there, and it's going to be fielded by the Satellites at the 23-yard line. Here they come. Able to get it to around the 32-yard line there. Looks like, like uh, senior Braden Lautenbach. It's a big individual, Gage, 6'3", 240. Yep, showed no fear bringing that one up the field. Just lowered its head, keep, her, keep, the, keep the, 
keep the ball moving, able to get it to the 32-yard line. So his offensive players really going to appreciate that starting field position and good effort by him. Comments back in the man look here tonight. Ball up the middle. Yep. A lot of space towards the outside. Peters stays in his box, able to bring him down. Good work there by the safety just to limit the yards there, but not what you want to see. That was Cade um, Zarasi there with the um, good pickup there by the satellites. Keep the chains moving. Comments have three in the box here. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. And a good tackle there by Yarber. He's just putting on a real, really good mixtape for his um, junior highlights here tonight and able to get another tackle. Satellites once again in shotgun formation, two out wide on the left. Unable to um, bring that down. There's a flag on the field. There's going to be a late hit. Not sure I agree with that one, but it's the ref's decision, not mine. That's going to be a first down. It's one of those plays that's super difficult to judge. You see a guy go try to lay out for a football, and you're going to fall behind it with a hit. That's just one of the things that's difficult to judge. And um, a first down there by the satellite, so they're going to get a break there. Fifteen yard penalty, first and ten here for the satellites. Another quarterback keeper here, Yarber. And a huge tackle there, and another flag. That was one of those plays that's a little bit risky to pull off his, um, he wrapped him up and slammed him to the ground. And it's great for not letting him to get away, but might be a little bit too much extracurricular activity there on Yarber. In the comments, um, had two unfortunate penalties against them back to back, and this is when you really have to start locking down mentally on the defensive side of the ball. You had two penalties against yourselves, um, and they're really going to just have to huddle up here, really start moving in unison once again, and yeah. try to get them to go three, maybe four, and out. That pair of penalties puts the satellites just outside the Comets red zone. Quarterback pass there on the flat route. That was Bushninski. We've seen his name a lot. Comets able to wrap him up there. He's going to turn uh, first and ten to around uh, second and four, maybe. I'm back. Timeout here. That's going to be by the satellites. And 
Gage, I'm trying to remember back. Is this the satellite's first visit to the red zone? Did they quite get there the last time they were in Comets territory? Um, I'm not sure. They might have. I believe they were just outside um, the 20 yard line. I believe maybe at the 27. Um, so I do believe this is their first red zone appearance here tonight. Great scoring opportunity, second and medium. And like I said before, this is one, this is going to be one of the defining drives of the game. However, this drive does turn out, whether it's three, six, seven, or zero points, this is really going to be a, a game changer here for both sides. Yeah, you, you really need to capitalize when you're gifted 30 yards. Yeah, absolutely. And um, they've had a couple of lucky breaks here tonight. And um, it's going to be, I believe, a flag false start. Excuse me, that was an uh, offside there on the Comets. So Comets going to give up, I believe, another first down. And they will. So the chain is going to keep moving. And um, I believe the last, um, the hardest yards to um, gain in football is going to be when you're just barely um, outside the red zone because the field is condensed. There's going to be a lot more guys in the box. And um, this um, is going to be pretty Interesting to see how this one plays out with the satellites knocking on the door here late in the, excuse me, halfway through the second quarter. Satellites now just starting at the 11-yard line. Firing towards the end zone. It's caught, and six points for the satellites. Great pass there by Clayton Strach. And um, that's going to crack the goose egg here for the South Central Satellites. Able to get on the board halfway through the second quarter. So the comments here have to have a really short memory gauge, not for the lessons to be learned off these penalties, uh, but for the emotion of those penalties. It, you don't give up points from that last mistake. I mean, you, you kind of do, but you know what I'm saying. It's kind of like the whole thing, you don't win tomorrow's game off today's touchdown. It, it's that kind of concept. And they're going to go for it on two, and they find him. So, and there's a penalty. I believe that might have been a late hit, but it won't matter. Two point conversion is good there. So, another great pass there by Clayton Strach. And eight points racked up here for um, South Central Satellites. And I do agree, I do agree with you, um, Blair. That's just one of the things that you just got to look past. Um, sometimes the the best way to score a touchdown is with the defense, just giving you um, kind of um, manageable penalties, able to um, take advantage of it, punch to the end zone for eight points. Um, so it looks like the official was uh, signaling for a face mask on that, that flag that was thrown. Yep, so that will actually wipe out the two-point conversion. And the Comets are going to get a little bit of a break there. And they'll get the football here halfway through the second quarter. Yarber and Boyer, two of the kind of the headlines here in the Comets rushing game here tonight, are back deep for the Comets. Boyer on the left and Yarber on the right. All right, so that uh, face mask call was against the Comets, uh, so they're gonna they're gonna back up a little deeper on this kickoff. Again, Comets though, 13 point advantage here. They absolutely can't let that get in their heads. They need yeah. to just play their game and yep. visit the end zone again. Yeah, no need to panic here for the Comets. Have plenty of time to still get those points back and more. Just really have to focus on playing the game that they were playing in the first quarter and on those first two drives and on that block punt. Just really have to lock in on what the keys were in those drives to start and really just go back to the basics, doing what they do best. Passing game has been working phenomenal. Running game, no issues there. And the Comets really, I just think they'll start off with with a couple runs just to get the momentum back and uh, see what they can do through the air. What they need to do is not get down on themselves over the frustrations of those penalties. They need to take that out on, on the defense. On the field, and speaking of taking their frustrations out, Boyer just leaves a massive hit. There is laundry on the field. Now this might be coming back. 
but great run there by Boyer. And that's, I believe, going to be a holding on the Comets. So once again, one of those backbreaker penalties, but this Comets team, they've been able to respond, so we'll see how they respond here, uh, starting with some adversity here on this drive. Puts him at first and 20. Engage Meniere out wide for the Comets. And once again, they're in the shotgun formation. Back towards the left side, it's Boyer once again. He's going to get some yards back there, probably around six to seven yards. So good play to start. Just got to keep the plays rolling, keep the positive yards um, going and see if they can pick up. Um, this first down. Second and 12 here. Yeah, let's face it. If you put six on the field every play, uh, even a 20-yard starting position isn't unsurmountable. Yeah, absolutely. Just try to keep the consistency game gains going. And Boyer towards the right side now. Great job there by Boyer, great effort. They're calling his name a lot. And he seems to be not ever gonna run out of juice here, able to keep the chains um, moving. Just a short third down here, so very manageable here by the Comets. I don't see why they wouldn't hand it off back to Boyer here on the short third down. I know last year during wrestling season, Boyer was one of those guys that we could count on to be able to go three periods of wrestling um, and do that multiple times in a larger, like Super 6, Super 8. So uh, he definitely has stamina. And I didn't see who the ball carrier was, but that will move those chains. Yep, I believe that just was a run out the middle. I believe that was Yarber. So Comets overcome some adversity here to start this drive, had that first and 20. And um, they're going to keep these chains moving. They're making consistent games. No huge plays yet, but it's just about moving the moving the chains in consistent um, consistent style. And that's what they've done here tonight. And they're looking at a first and ten here, just at about midfield. This could be a handoff to Yarber towards the right side. Yarber cutting back up the field. That should be enough for a first the chains. Down. Finally taken down at the Satellites 42. Yep, that's just one of the things you can utilize when running towards the outside is the cutback. The defense tries to over pursue, goes ahead and cuts it, cuts it back up the middle of the field and able to gain around four to five extra yards. Well, that defense, you saw how many Satellites they finally put on him because if he would have gotten just a few more steps and some more open grass, Yarbrough would have been visiting the end zone again. Molenkoff and Brewer here in the backfield. Back to Boyer. Boyer's going to follow Molenkoff. He's going to lay a pretty good block there. And another first down. The Comets are going to keep this thing rolling. Just enough for the first down. Ten yards gained. And the Molen and uh, Gavin Molenkoff, great block there. Able to keep Boyer running down the side of the field. And uh, that's just one of the things that isn't really noticed a lot is um, how well um, a quarterback and how important they can be in the in the blocking game, in the running game. Molenkoff explodes out of the backfield, able to get in front of some defenders, blocks him, and allows Boyer to scale for probably four extra yards there. I'd say that's one of the advantageous disadvantages of being a small school is because in a bigger school, your quarterback would never risk himself like that. Yarber's still on his feet. Looks like seven yards there. Yep, determined running there by Yarber, and that's just pure weight room right there. Put in the work in the weight room. That's going to pay off on Friday nights. And a great run there. Second and short here for the Comets. And this is about that field position just right outside the red zone when we see the passing game start to come in for the Comets. And I wouldn't be surprised if they try to throw one deep here on the second and short play. Yeah, you sort of have a couple downs to play with. Might as well put it in the air. 
Now yeah, we'll see what they do. Molenkoff going to keep it on the bootleg. Cutting right back up the middle of the field. It's going to trot into the end zone. We've seen Molenkoff explode in that backfield in the passing game and in the running game. And uh, he's able to walk that one in. Um, dragging one defender with him, actually. And able to march it in for six points. And this, Gage, is the cast in football that we heard every coach talking about in the preseason. This is what they were expecting. Uh, these guys just needed some time. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I mentioned um, in the first game we broadcast this season. It's not necessarily, you know, about the games during the season. It's about getting prepared for the postseason because every team does make it into that postseason. It's about how far can you go. Um, it's not about how you put the pieces together. It's generally about when you put those pieces together. And the Comets seem to be doing it here tonight. And uh, they have a pretty strong lead here on the satellites. 28-8 Comets with 5-10 left in the half. You stay tuned at home, but we're going to step away and say thank you to our sponsors. Keep watching Cast and Comets Football here on RTC TV. Looking for a cleaner defense on this satellite's drive. Yeah, absolutely. They had a little bit of help in hand there, first and 20. But uh, that's just what the run game has done for the Comets tonight. Saying now blockers um, deep on the left and the right side. So that's really going to create some opportunities going down the sideline. And uh, Molenkoff's going to send this one away. Open field tackle chance here by the Comets. And that is going to do just that. That's Tucker Wolver, I believe. Tucker Wolver. And Carson Hammond. Two freshmen able to wrap him up there. Um, pretty good field position, though, to start here on the short kick by Molenkoff at around the 27-yard um, line. So good starting field position. And uh, we'll see what the satellites can dial up here. Run up the middle of the field. Short run. A little bit of a low snap there, it looks like. And I think that impacted the ability to generate a play off of it. Yeah, low snaps they usually just affect the timing of the play, and that's sometimes all you need. Um, football is a game of seconds, really, and uh, it proves dividend right there, not able to pick up as much yards as they liked. Once again, the satellite's in the shotgun. That's going to be another handoff towards the right side of the field. Wrapped up there by the Comet crew. And uh, you know, just one or two. Yep, third down and around five yards. Be nice to force them back in another punt formation in the first set of downs. Yeah, absolutely. This Comet's defense looked like they cleared their minds there. Um, from that unfortunate last drive. And that's what we were just talking about earlier was just don't worry about it. You've got plenty of time. Your offense is really doing some, some pretty good stuff out there. Just play the defense you know. And that's a one-handed snag there. That is, I believe, um, Cameron Schultz able to bring that one in. And that's just one of the things that's um, incredible in the game of football is the one-handed catch. And, of course, those gloves are always so sticky able to yeah. bring in some footballs and um, you know great awareness there not able um, yeah. not afraid to take the hit credit where credit's due on that one moves the uh, line up to the 50 and gives the satellites a fresh set of downs two out wide here for the satellites quarterback keeper comets are going to meet them right at the line of scrimmage and push them back and the comets would think they have the football Tucker Wolver thinks he had it, but I do believe just poor progress was stopped. So um, once that happened, the plays is dead. So um, unfortunate break there by the Comets. Number 10, 
Chain Gang is going to credit that with one yard to gain. Dropping back to pass here. Right at the first down marker. Might be just a tad short. Maybe a yard. They believe it's going to be a third and short here. So good, plat, good pass there by Clayton Strach. Um, and we've seen he's been a pretty accurate quarterback just when he gets his feet set and able to go through those progressions. And he's had two really nice passes here, that one-handed catch. Um, really solid pass, led his man in the right spot. And that, um, that pass there on the last play. I wouldn't be surprised the comments really try to send a lot of guys here. And that is going to be a pretty obvious false start there. Just some timing issues. Excuse me, that's going to be encroachment on the Comets. I believe the referees are going to chant this one over. A little bit of confusion between the Zebras. Hey, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a satellite's first down, but... It's going to be a false start there. Oh, I stand corrected. That's one thing that's pretty hard to call um, at every level is, is it going to be encroachment or is it going to be um, a false start? And it looks like the offensive player just um, got out a little bit sooner compared to the defensive end. So it's going to be a third and medium here. Strach rolling out. Lots of time in the box. Brewer's going to try to chase him down. And it's going to be a catch there, and Maneer and Boyer bringing him down. And that's just one of the things that you really can't allow to happen is you just get in front of your receiver um, on an out route. And uh, unfortunate um, break there. You saw Brewer really trailing behind Strach. Thought he was actually going to wrap him up for a sack. But Strach, nonetheless, credit is earned where credit's due. And that pass was right on the money there to his man. Honestly, I think that was a, a lucky break for Maneer. The uh, Boyer got in there and completed that tackle. Yep, pass right between the the box on the offensive side. And the Comets, they just laid a hammer and able to retain the football. So that's just how quickly we've seen momentum change. You see the Comets just getting some unlucky breaks, and before you know it, they have the football. And we've been on the receiving end of that in previous games. We have been. And just, you know, one unlucky break, breaks the momentum. Yep, the cookie really does seem to be crumbling in the Comets direction here tonight. And that's just a really good really good job of the defense just honing in on the football. Um, that's the most important thing out there. It's not necessarily your guy, but just making a play on the football. And that's what they've done here tonight. And solid field position taking over on the 27. Molenkoff out on the out route. That's Brewer. And Brewer, a stiff arm and gets out of bounds. And that looks like enough to move the chains. They're, it's kind of hard to see that near sideline, but I see the chain gang moving. 70 seconds left in the first half. Comets up 28-8. Yep, and that's just like I hit on before. The Comets are using all 11 guys out there on the field. We saw earlier that Brewer was really just a defensive end, defensive tackle kind of guy, but um, I never really thought they were going to start using him in the passing game, but how about that out route for a first down? Brewer has really stepped up his overall total athleticism uh, across his freshman year. Got a flag on the play. This will be a false start in the Comets. Molenkoff, um, the younger brother, is going to check in for this one. Meneer is going to sub out. Five-yard penalty for the Comets. Repeat first down. Yeah, we'll see what the Comets do here. Might just go right back to the running game. It's been working all night. Right back to Yarber towards the right side, trying to cut up the field. Another flag in. 
seen a lot of laundry here tonight, but the plays, um, the calls have been correct. Haven't really had a problem with it. It's just about playing clean football. And um, another flag here on the field, and we'll see what this one's going to address. It's going to be a face mask on the defense. So I believe that might be a first down. It is a 15-yard penalty. Yep, so will be just enough for the first down. Comets back in the shotgun formation here. Yarber in motion back to Boyer. A little bit of misdirection there, and Boyer breaking out. Sprinting towards the sideline. 30, 20, 15 out of bounds. Wow, what a run by Boyer. And it took about four tackle attempts to finally bring him down. Yeah, he really showcased his speed there. Really thought he was going to be brought down at around the um, first down chain. Just breaks out of two tackles and keeps on going. And the Comets once again in a red zone situation to just add on um, to this gaping leave already. 50 seconds left here in this first half of play. Boyer once again back there in the field with Molenkoff. Molenkoff with the blocking. Boyer cutting up in the field. And that's going to be at the five-yard line before they bring him down. And a timeout. Coach Ulrich is going to talk this one over with his team. Well, they're going to talk it over, and we're going to thank the sponsors. Uh, this part of the broadcast brought to you by New Holland Rochester. If you're watching Cast Comets football, come back. Just 43 seconds remain in the half here on RTC. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure what strategy session Coach Ulrich had there, but uh, the Comets were back on the field pretty quickly. Yeah, I believe it just was to stop the clock, give Boyer, who's really had a lot of runs, a quick breather, maybe a little squirt of water, but they're, they were hustling right back out there onto the field. Probably just tell him the play call, get him rested up, and send him back out. Satellites taking a lot more time. Of course, it's a lot more crucial for the satellites to stop the Comets here on their uh, first, and goal, first and goal positioning. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to a misdirection with Yarber towards the left side of the field. It's going to be back to you. Boyer towards the right. He's going to follow Molenkoff into the end zone for six. I believe we can start giving Gavin Molenkoff his flowers on the blocking game tonight. Really just um, putting his team first, able to lay some big blocks there. And he just led Boyer right into the end zone. McGrew lining up for his fifth PAT attempt. Four for four so far. Logan Molenkoff, the holder. Good hold. That one, no good. Just missed the left upright. Well, with 39-2 left to play in the first half, Comets are going to send it back away to the satellites uh, with a 34-8 advantage. We'll be back after this word from Jaredi's place here on RTC. Gentlemen, just under 40 seconds left in the half. 40 seconds is a lot of time on the football field. Gage, like you said, this is a game played in seconds, uh, and we know that 40 seconds is realistically enough time to really turn a football game around. Uh, comments, of course, uh, will be receiving to start the second half. Uh, so this, this drive is so crucial for these satellites uh, because they're looking at a potential situation. If they can't put six more on the board before the half, of um, this Comets offense that's been steamrolling here tonight, putting them in a running clock second half very early in the third. Kicks yeah. up and away. And laundry on the kick. Legal motion. But that wasn't a legal motion there on the Comets. And yeah, like you said before, um, 
plenty of time here for South Central. Of course, with their passing game, we'll see them be so explosive. And with two timeouts that they have left on top of that, um, they're, they're really not against the odds here to try to put one in the end zone. He reset on the 35. And we'll try it again. Here goes Mullenkopf for the second time. Good kick here. Fielded at the 24-yard line. Here come the satellites. Good tackle there by the Comets. I believe that was Tucker Wolver. Yeah, once again, satellites, big man taking possession of that. Uh, Latin back. First and 10, ball on 39. Satellites 39, that is. Yeah, we've seen the satellites able to use the quick slant um, to their advantage here, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just start this drive by hitting one right um, in the box here. Strach pressured. Brewer following. He's going to keep it. Yarber unable to bring him down. Strach, though, picking up about seven yards on that carry. Timeout used by West Central. Yeah, South Central. Excuse me. <laughs> One of the Centrals. Uh, looks like, wow, a pickup of eight. Talk about making something from nothing. Had the entire Comets defensive line committed to him. And Strach nearly moved the chains all on his own. Yeah, that's just one of the things that you really look for in a quarterback is able to extend plays. I honestly thought it was going to be brought down for a sack, and that would have been the end of the first half. But um, able to extend the play, rolls out towards the opposite side of the field, um, evades Yarber and two other Comets defenders, able to pick up eight or nine yards there. So great job there by Strach with just sticking with the play and making the most out of nothing. On the other hand, kudos to the Comets who just burned over 10 seconds on a single play. Yeah, absolutely. That's just one of the big things that you're going to try to do, especially um, South Central only one timeout left. So if you're a Central fan, you really got to start thinking about how they want to use this final timeout. Satellites once again back in the gun formation. Strach back to pass. He's going to step up in the pocket with the hitch. Wide open man. And the first down is going to be picked up. That's the final timeout. So that's where they're going to use it. And you got 14 seconds try to punch it in the end zone for 41 yards out. Now you're going to see um, South Central going to start firing passes towards the sideline instead of the middle of the field because if you fire towards the middle of the field, clock keeps running. If you try to get out of bounds, the clock stops. So I would not be surprised um, if they start firing some outrides here. So the Collins are really going to have to lock it on the defensive side of the ball and try to keep the place in the middle of the field. Yeah, 14 seconds to go, and let's face it, from a dead stop, it only takes about five for any of these guys to cover 40 yards. Yeah, absolutely got some quick guys on both sides, and uh, we'll see how the Comets um, respond to a couple quick passes there and good plays there by Strach. And you can see it now. You have um, Maneer lined up on the opposite side of the field. He's going to be guarding that sideline. You got three out wide towards the right side of the field. Strach firing, and that one's going to be a dirt ball. Great QB pressure by this Comets defense here. Yeah, really honing in on their um, defensive assignments, just focusing on guarding their guy. Because you know the pass is coming. You know the football has a high chance to come your way. So just focus on um, keeping you between the man and the ball. And that's what the Comets have done well here so far. Strach drops back to throw. 
Runs up towards the right side, fired on the sideline, and that's going to be a pass interference there. Manier just falls into his man. That's just one thing you didn't want to see as a Comets fan. And that just proves why cornerback is one of the hardest positions to play because you want to be aggressive and you want to get your hands on the football, but you got to do it legally. And you got to be able to stop on a dime, not be able to run to the offensive player. And when you're eyeing the football and trying to make a play on the football, it's pretty easy to run to an offensive player. So um, we're going to see, I believe, a pass interference. Yep, so that's what it's going to be. So this puts it um, into the range of just firing one towards the end zone here. This is most likely going to be the final play of the half. So if you're the Comets, I'm probably just going to focus on guarding that goal line and um, try to wrap them up. Meneer and Molenkopf going to switch sides of the field here on the defensive side. Schrotz once again in the shotgun. He's going to drop back to pass. Plenty Firing time. one towards the left side of the end zone. And it's incomplete. That's what you want as a Comets fan. All right, at the half, we're going to go into the locker room. 34-8, Comets advantage. Comets will receive to go into the second half. Uh, but before we break for commercial, I believe that we have... A uh, uh, like a cheer camp presentation out here at halftime. So with that, we're gonna take it to House Audio, and we'll be back. But it's certainly not been for lack of effort on the part of the South Central Satellites. Yeah, they they've done a a great job competing with the Comets and trying to put forth their best product out there, but at the end of the day, we've seen their drives just fizzle out. They've been getting on the field pretty well, but it's they just haven't been able to put on um, a lot of points on the scoreboard. They had that, that one drive that was able to get eight points off of um, the 30 yards worth of penalties that the Comets gave them, but um, they just unfortunately haven't had a very good percentage tonight in the red zone. And um, Yarber's back to return this one. He's blasting off towards the left side. He's wide open. It's a foot race to the end zone. He's going to cut back up the middle of the field, and we will see a running clock as Yarber takes Boom. it to the end zone. What a huge kickoff return for Yarber. And that's the speed we've seen from the junior. Fires right out of the gap, follows the blocking, cuts it back up the middle of the field, and could have walked that one in the end zone for six points. Now, I do have to say, I just uh, realized my math wasn't mathing. Uh, with that one missed PAT uh, and the satellites doing a two-point conversion on their touchdown, uh, this is only 32 points. So it's going to take a, it is going to take a Comets defense. Uh, be nice to grab a pick six or something. I say only 32 points. <laughs> McGrew is going to kick this one through. Molenkoff, the holder. High snap, but good hold. Low kick, and it's through. So the Comets. 33-point lead with just 14 seconds off the clock. What a fantastic kickoff return to start the half. Well, while the comments are talking their kickoff strategy, we're going to step away and say thank you to our sponsors. This segment brought to you by Arlington Public House here on RTC TV4. Yep, a uh, pretty positive way to start the um, quarter, to say the least. Um, Molenkoff didn't even need to step onto the field. This one's going to be kicked out of bounds, so um, South Central is going to have to pretty st um, 
excuse me, pretty good starting field position here. They're going to start at the 35 yard line after that penalty. First and 10. Decent field position for the satellites. Uh, I do hate that we've gifted them more yardage uh, just because the eight points they have on the board were in large part a gift wrapped by the cast and comments. Uh, 30 yards of that given up as penalties. And all of those 50s in the comments own backfield. Comet's going to have three in the box here at the start of this play. Shotgun formation here for the Satellites. A blitz coming, and that is going to be... We're going to have a neutral zone infraction. Yep. That's just one thing that's so difficult um, as a left or right outside linebacker is if you're going to blitz, you have to be able to time it um, Yarber and uh, I believe Wolver just a fraction early there on that one. Looks like they're going to bring it again. Here they come, low snap here, Strach towards the outside. He breaks the first tackle, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of around two yards. So second and three. Excuse me, second and four. Lane Holterman. Uh, I believe the senior able to bring him down. Much better snap that time. Yep, running towards moves the, the right chains. Side. And that's just one of the things you have to look for here as a Satellites fan. And as a player, you don't need everything back on one play. You can still put together consistent gains, have a consistent drive, and start building momentum to hopefully lead you into the fourth quarter. Um, that's just what you're looking for. You don't have to pass three times, four times, and get out of the ball game. You can build off runs, and that's what they did there on that last play. Absolutely. I had an opportunity to talk with uh, Coach Gonzalez about that one morning in the weight room this week that – it, it's those four yards, man. Four yards, five yards, that's all you need to carry. If you get more, you get more. But Yeah, and it's also mental warfare, too, because when you think about it, if you're on the defensive side, you keep giving up four, five, six yards, you got to be thinking, what are we doing? we got to start hitting these gaps faster and quicker, and as soon as you start doing that, they're going to pass it through the air. And we've seen um, South Central, although it hasn't showed up on the scoreboard, they've been able to adjust based off what the con wants to bring out. Of course, in the first half, once they started putting it in the air, we saw several near picks. Big neutral zone infraction. So Collins, another gift there for the satellites to keep this drive going. Brewer knew he messed up as soon as he did it. Yeah, that's one of the things that if it happens, you just got to keep your head up and go on to the next play. Nothing you can do about it. Um, after the flag is thrown, just really try to hone in on knowing when the football is snapped and just um, let your game speak for itself. This is the time, though, that that short memory we talked about comes into play. Yep, another handoff here in the middle of the field. It's going to be about a gain of five yards. So consistent gains, not huge runs, but nonetheless consistent gains here by the satellites. And this common defense, we're going to start tightening down. Two out wide here for the Satellites. That's going to be a quarterback keeper on the draw. Hit out of bounds. Collins able to bring him down, though. I believe, yep, before the first down was gained. So um, good break there by the Collins to force him towards the outside, not allowing him to cut it back up the field. 
And this is going to be a third and manageable for the Satellites. Realistically, though, they forced him to cover a lot of yards to pick up two or three. <clears throat> Comets defense, though, they know they need to stop here. Quarterback keeper here. What we're trying to do is best there to read where the Comets were going to be. And a helmet pops off here for the Comets. It was uh, Tucker Wolver helmet came off, so he's going to have to step off the field for a little bit. And uh, London Hurd is going to come in for him. Fourth down. This is probably the biggest play of the ball game for the Satellites. Have to keep this drive going this far into the game. And the Comets, if they can stop them here, they're really going to have a, a good grip on this thing to carry this one out. We'll see what happens. Realistically, they need to tackle the QB in the backfield. Yep. Big sack, but. Good pitch play right here. That's going to move the chains. Molnkoff might have a little bit of hand on his shoulder pad. Looks like they're not going to call it there, but it will be enough for a first down. Whistles on the field. That's going to be a false start on the satellite. So they're going to take it back five yards and we'll retry this first down. Looks like the lineman just got off a little quick there. Still three plays or maybe even four to make up for it. And the Comets, I believe, are going to call a timeout now. Pretty busy day for Comets Athletics tomorrow. Uh, cross country, the varsity cross country will be heading up to New Prairie High School uh, to run in the massive New Prairie invite up there. Um, about an hour and a half drive. Of course, if you'd like to come out and support the Comets runners, uh, that is a huge event to go visit. Uh, each race, somewhere 250, 300 contestants per race. Uh, it's a, it truly is a sight to behold. Uh, 7th and 8th grade junior high volleyball round robin tournament at home. And the JV football boys will be hosting uh, Delphi Communities JV. Also, junior high football will be traveling up to South Central and uh, looking to get their own win against the junior high satellites tomorrow. Uh, that kickoff is scheduled for 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So, once again, plenty of Comets Athletics tomorrow. And then, of course, we have Chargers Youth Football at the Crater on Sunday. All right, Satellites first and 15. Molenkoff and uh, Muneer there in the cornerback positions. Pressured, flag is thrown, an interception there by Ashton Peters. Falling back up towards the right side of the field. There's laundry though. Even more laundry. There's two flags thrown by two different referees at different times, so a lot of possibilities that could be an outcome of this. We'll see what happens. Well, you don't want to 
Looks like there's going to be flags on both teams here, so. All right, unsure what happened there, but uh, the satellites will retain possession. In fact, pick up some yardage. There's going to be a first and five for them to start. Run right up the middle. Met by a crew of Comets and a fumble, and the Comets land on it. Heads up, play there by the Comets. That was Ashton Peters, in fact, the guy who, who had that interception and was robbed from it. Um, gets his turnover right there on the fumble recovery. Well, you know, would have liked to have it a little earlier with those bonus yards, but we'll take it when we can get it, Gage. Yeah, uh, that definitely came around for full circle there for Mr. Peters, able to um, get that big play. He had the interception, wiped out, gets the fumble recovery, and that's just um, great work there by the Comets defense. Comets offense takes over just outside their own red zone. Molnkoff and Boyer in the gun. Boyer to receive. Boyer blasting up the middle of the field towards the right side. That's going to be enough for a first down. So great effort there by Boyer. Drug the defender by his shoelaces. Boyer was making positive yardage, hopping on a single foot. Yeah, he's one of those guys, especially with how small he is, he's so explosive when he gets the ball in his hands. And the only thing he's thinking about when he gets that football is just exploding through that gap. And he did it right there. Great lateral quickness, able to get a first down there for his teammates. Yeah, anybody who looks at Boyer and says, oh, you know, he, he's, he looks a little small, they're misreading that whole situation. Yeah, he definitely has a knack for um, exploding through some tackles. And here comes Yarber. Gain around eight yards. So good run there by Yarber. <laughs> Yarber limping off the field. Psyche Myers had a little bit of cramp. My guess be, would be cramping. Uh, we're getting midway through the third. It was a hot day. Logan Molenkoff out wide here for the Comets. And a direct snap to, um, I'm not sure who that is, but he's taken off towards the end zone. He's carrying four. Wow. That is incredible. That was Brody Brewer trucking his way down the football field. That's just one of those guys that um, is super quick for their size. You know, Brewer is super explosive um, in the weight room, and he proves it here on the football field. That was a direct snap to him in the halfback position and just pulls six satellites with him for around 15 yards. The that was there. incredible. Meneer in motion, direct snap to Boyer, who's following his lineman up the middle of the field. Good solid running there by Boyer. He's been doing that all night. Looks like he picked up seven or eight. Direct staff to Molenkov. Hand off to Manier towards the sideline. He's following his blockers. Tries to cut back up field. He's going to oh, be just, just short shy. At the one yard line. Just inches away from a running clock. They're going to be on the one yard line first and goal, but there is a flag. 
believe it might be a holding call against the Comets. Blocking the back on the offense. Unfortunate turn of events there for the Comets, so they will take that one back. So that puts the ball right at the chains. Are they going to go ahead and move it? Might be. Yep, looks like they're going to go ahead and move those chains just um, between about six yards between the first down marker and the end zone. So we'll see what Molenkoff and his offense can dial up here. Direct snap to Boyer. And that's going to be a gain of about two. Looks like no gain on that one, so it will be second. So they will get a couple yards in that one. Third and seven, excuse me, second and seven, I believe. Back to Boyer on this run, following his blockers, cutting back up field. Good patient running there. Not quite enough for a first down, but awful close. This is one of those areas on the football field when you can really run or pass it. You got a third and short situation. Muneer is going to sub back into this ball game. And with Muneer in, I would assume that it would be a run. Muneer's going to line out wide here on the left side of the football field. Yarber in motion. He's going to follow Boyer. Yarber's going to get the first down and back into the end zone. So great run there by Yarber, and the running clock has been established here at the end of the third quarter. McGrew back out there looking to make this a 40-point lead for the Comets. Yep, dominant um, display here by the Comets here and I really just clicking on all cylinders. And as a Comets fan, it's very, very good to see these boys finally starting to put it together as McGrew bangs that one through the uprights. Um, and he's come a long way from last week as well. I believe he's 5-4-6 on... PAT tonight, six or seven, somewhere in that range. But yeah, Absolutely. great, great and job there. Speaking of kicking, speaking of McGrew, I got to give a shout out to uh, to the Comets soccer program. Uh, got their first one of the season this week too. It has been a big week for Comets athletics. Well, as the Comets get ready to send the football back to the satellites, we're going to step away and say thank you to REMC for bringing you a portion of this program tonight on RTC. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Molenkoff rallying his team here to send this one away. Good quick kick towards the right side of the field. Excuse me, the left side. Tracking up towards the left side of the sideline. Brought down at the 35, right in front of the press box. Tackle made there by Lane Holterman and cleaned up by Brody Brewer. So great teamwork there by those two tackles. And we're going to get a first down here for the Satellites. Handoff, and again around five yards there. Cade Zarazi. Brewer comes around, finds a hole, makes the tackle. Looks like just a cramp. His teammates already helping him out. Yeah. 
course, they want to assume with injuries on the field, but it looks like Rue is all right, just getting his calf stretched out. Brewer hops up with a little bit of a limp. That's always good to see. Able to walk off the field under your own power. So, absolutely. Of course, uh, while they're lining back up, we can take a look at uh, one of the things that led to that cramp as we watch Brewer carrying one, two, three, looks like four of the satellites before being taken down uh, just a few plays back. So, those legs have put in some work here tonight, Gage. Yeah, he's just one of those guys who's always going to put forth his best effort no matter what the scoreboard is. He could have got that first down and went ahead and got down on the ground, but he wanted to see how far he could go. And um, He's one of those guys who's always working hard no matter what he's doing, and uh, it's nice to see him able to put that highlight there for us. Quarterback keeper here trying to follow his up, man. And it looks like we're going to be dead at the line of scrimmage. Third down and around three yards here. Strach back to receive this snap. Tipped. Great heads up play there by the Comets. That was Noah Hurd, the senior there, deflecting that pass. Fourth and three now. Ball on your own 42. I mean, I feel like the safe thing is to kick it away, but you've almost got to go for it, don't you? Yeah, I mean, not your best night. Might as well just try to um, put everything out there on the line, just try to get some drives moving. So I don't disagree with this. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks like they're staying here. in the gun. Yep. So the one on two there, quarterback keeper. And he'll move the chains. Yep. Big risk, but it paid off there with the first down there. Clayton Strach there on the keeper. Had a lot of runs here tonight as a quarterback, and um, he's helped this team out. Although it hasn't translated to the scoreboard there, he's been one of the key players for his team tonight. Absolutely. Well, as we get ready to go into this running clock fourth quarter, we're going to thank our sponsors, and then we'll be right back for fourth quarter action here on RTC TV. Gentlemen, heading into the last 12 minutes of regulation here tonight, Satellites still working hard. Just haven't been able to really translate that into visits to the end zone here tonight. Yeah, and credit to the Comets. They've they've really turned things around from their um, past showing here in the Comet career. They've really honed in. They've, they're working in unison on both sides of the football, and they've made um, South Central, um, they've really made them think about what they want to run offensively. And, um Credit is due right there for the Comets for really not letting past the past week affect them and really just coming into this game with an open mind and a fresh slate. And they've really put forth a pretty good showing here tonight for the Comet fans. Strauch back in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off here. Good tackle there by Jake Farr. Farr. One of our freshmen there, big stop, just sat down and gator rolled. Yep, he's one of those freshmen who 
Um, although he doesn't play a lot right now, you can definitely see in two, three years really developing into a good tackle or defensive end. Um, him and his twin brother both have the build, and it's all about just getting that experience down, and it's glad to see him that they're getting that tonight. Yeah, there are a couple of big guys. I know that um, Coach Brubaker is really excited to be working with them in the throwing ring in the spring. That pass com that was incomplete. So oh, wow. Bobbled it. Yep, so that was um, Maneer able to make the offensive player juggle that one. Gets him out of bounds. So great heads up play there by the corner. Third and long here for the satellites. And the shotgun once again, looking for the out route here, just over the head. Great of Beninsky right there. Great pressure by the defense. Puts the satellites once again in a fourth and long scenario. Yeah, and it's just one of those times when Fox running might as well just go for it again, and I expect him to stay out there. Absolutely. You turn over on downs at the 50. It's not a good thing, but it's not the worst thing you could possibly do. And we've seen him made, make big pass plays tonight, so this could absolutely pay off. Plenty of time in the pocket. Yep, firing towards the middle of the field, and it's, oh, just dropped by Molkoff. Smacking as how he knew he had that one. But, um... It's almost like a positive if you didn't get that because they're going to get it a better <laughs> field gonna, position. I was just thinking that. Although oh. the interception would have been nice in the stat sheet, really doesn't affect um, how the outcome of this one's going to be. Better field position. And um, it's just been a dominant display here by the Comets with just over nine minutes remaining in this one. I would expect to try to get some of your younger guys some snaps, give them some experience here in the varsity environment and roll out of here on a W. Yeah, Comets now, 40-point advantage, big upset on the John Harrell prediction. Uh, but I have to say, I think that prediction was based on, it was based on stats, obviously. And we've said it all season, the stats haven't told the whole story. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's the late flag there. That was a little bit of extracurricular activity there. I understand the anger, but you just can't, you can't suplex a guy <laughs> like that. Not anymore, at least. Um, that's going to help out the Comets and get them a first down. But, yeah, I mean, the Comets, they did come into this game. Um, they weren't they weren't um, projected to come out to win. They were a little bit the underdogs. And I, I was talking to the guys, and they seemed to have a little bit of chip on the shoulder from that, and they came out firing. They didn't let that um, prediction hold them back, and they've really just taken control of this ball game, really from the opening defensive stand on that blocked punt. I'm going to go ahead and say that in many ways, the Comets have put all 56 points on the board. Because once again, that visit to the end zone by the Satellites was absolutely gift-wrapped by just some Comets defensive mistakes. Yep. Hand up right up the middle of the field. Paul just not able to see who was carrying that one. Brody Brewer once again making his presence felt on the offensive side of the ball. Glad to see him back in the game after that unfortunate cramp there. Yeah, just a reminder for any athlete out there who's watching this or watching the replay. Hydration, so important. Got to replace those fluids. Got to replace those electrolytes. It was nearly 90 degrees today before we got underway here. So, Wonkoff back in the gun here. Snap to uh, Manier towards the right side of the field. Cuts back up the field and back towards the sideline. That will be more than enough to move the chains. Won't go out of bounds. Keep it inbounds. Good call when you've got the advantage of the running clock. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep the ball rolling. Um, give it to your, to your guys who haven't really had a lot of plays um, to them. Uh, Manier obviously had that big play, but unfortunately was called back. Nice to see him get that, that sweep again, and he really capitalized on his opportunity right there. Uh, I see uh, 
Tucker Wolliver limping off the field a little bit. Collins got a hustle to the line here. Only three seconds left on the play clock. Snap it, snap it, snap it. Got it. Up the middle. Not a half bad play there from that. This is one of the things that are kind of the untold difficulties in football is if some guy gets injured, it's just hustling on and off the field and getting the play called. Although 40 seconds seems like a lot of time, it's really not that, not that long when you're trying to call plays and get the snap off. Um, good job there by the Comets, just not panicking, getting in the right position and snapping the ball. So, Just under half of the fourth remains here tonight. This will be back up the middle of the field. That's Brewer again. He's going to get brought down. Got a gain of three yards. South Central does have all three of their second half timeouts remaining to uh, pause that, that game clock if they feel like they are, would get any advantage out of it. But uh, I'm almost thinking at this point they're just getting reps in. That was a direct pitch to Maneer, but a fumble. And we thought it was Brewer once again able to dive on it. Excuse me, that was uh, Lucius Edison able to dive on it. And the Comets are trot now here for it looks like a field goal attempt personnel switch here and yes it will be a field goal attempt here by McGrew so a little bit different spot compared to the all the PATs he's had a kick tonight but they're going to try his luck with him this looks about a 30 yarder 31 yards officially Good snap and hold, and that one is just, just wide. left. Just left, had the good contact, just not able to direct it. But I just want to push pause here and ask, when was the last time the Comets attempted a field goal where we thought we had a chance <laughs> on putting three on the board? Yeah, it's been a while, but McGrew, he's, he's had a pretty successful um, time here tonight, so... Uh, not surprised to let Orwick trust him with that field goal. Had good contact, just a little he, he bit absolutely, left. He absolutely had the distance. The windage was just a little off. Unfortunately, that, that uh, the limp flag over there says that we can't blame it on any wind. <laughs> now, regardless, just over three and a half minutes left here tonight. So run towards the outside. Brought down by the Comets. A lot of yardage covered for just a little gain on that one. That was Owen Chapman there with the stop. So probably like 20 yards run on that carry for only a gain of two. Yeah, and that's been that's been credit to the Comets for um, they've been running towards the outside, so as a linebacker in a corner, you really have to um, know where the ball is at all times, especially running towards the sideline. And Owen Chapman, the freshman, able to recognize that and sprints towards the ball and gets a tackle of his own. Looks like we had a neutral zone infraction there by the Comets. Give up five. Second and two here. Snap right up the middle of the field and brought down by Owen Chapman in a slew of comets. Jake Farr there with another tackle to his name. Snap, drops back to throw straw towards the middle of the field, wide open. And let's see if the Comets can chase him down, but it looks this like they're going to go him all go. the way. So, a little bit of a positive there on a rough night here for the Sand Alliance. They're able to um, 
complete that pass for a touchdown. That's just one of the little bit of inexperience here, inexperiences by the commas just playing guys who haven't necessarily played the position before. You're going to get a little bit of miscommunication. But luckily for the Comets, won't really affect the outcome of this one. Yeah, these younger Comets really honestly still doing a decent job against this still first string satellite squad. Yeah, absolutely. And usually for teams, it's not necessarily the communication, but it's just making tackles. But we've seen this young Comets group able to wrap guys up, make tackles. And no good on the two-point conversion. Uh, the pass was right to the bread basket, but he dropped it. All right, 45 seconds left well, with this kickoff. I imagine that we're going to receive the kickoff, make one play, and probably knee it out. But we're going to step away and say thank you to Harley-Davidson of Kokomo for bringing you part of this broadcast on RTC. Satellites lining up to send off what is very likely the last kickoff of the night, uh, especially with this JV Comet squad or, or second, second, third string Comet squad, either way out there. Uh, we did see Yarber open the second half with that kickoff return. Uh, it would really be something for these younger Comets to do the same thing. I, I don't foresee that. <laughs> There's a bit of a size disparity and an experience disparity out there. Yep, but a high low kick here. They're just that's Braxton and you're made, made a smart business, move business decision there by the freshman just getting down <laughs> like nope we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start our offense we're not gonna get we're not gonna get uh, murdered here tonight they might not even I don't think they will we've only got 20 seconds left on the game clock I I imagine that we just saw the very last moments of the game as we cross the 10 second mark. So I do believe yep, I can officially it. say 48-14, your official final score here tonight. Congratulations to our Comets. Uh, got a big win tonight, uh, a conference win tonight. That makes it doubly important. And uh, I, I have to say that as a Comets fan, I'm just really happy to finally see uh, – all of the parts start firing together. Um, you know, you, you, we, we use the phrase firing on all cylinders, and it's really kind of felt like a project car this season. It's like, man, we, we know we've got the good engine. We know we've got all the good parts in here, uh, but something's just not quite clicking, and it looks like we finally got the timing on. We finally got the right coils in. We finally got enough fuel going, and, boy, it fired off and had a big night. Yeah, I thought the Comets was was going to do a pretty decent job here tonight, but I wasn't expecting them to come out and play the way they played. If you would have took um, their unfortunate last week performance and compared it to now, I would have said it's a completely different team. This team has grown tremendously in the past week, and just looking out um, over the stats that we've had through the night, it's just really been a dominant performance and a really proud showing here by the Comets. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you all at home for joining us. It uh, looks like we're going to have a, an away week next week, so join us here on October 4th as your Comets host the Triton Trojans for homecoming. Uh, so that will, of course, be a big night for the Comets fandom. But until then, I'm Blair Zimmerman. And I'm Gage Thomas. And this is Casting Comets Football on RTC TV4. Good night.